artificial intelligence cbsc course code 417 classes 8 9 10 10th session 2 types and techniques of artificial intelligence so broadly if we look at artificial intelligence the term uh, on the basis of the level of intelligence of a machine and the functionality of a machine these are the two bases on which uh, we will look into various types of artificial intelligence which are there around in the industry which have been achieved so far so let us see artificial intelligence types on the basis of intelligence level and functionality intelligence level if we see there are two types of artificial intelligence one is called weak or narrow intelligence the other is strong or generalized intelligence as the name suggests weak intelligence is a very basic kind of artificial intelligence and which is commonly seen around uh, the machine or the algorithm uh, having possessing weak or narrow intelligence uh, actually exhibits a very limited functionality it is actually capable of performing a single task a particular task dedicated to it and it is programmed through rules and logic to complete that task For example machine which is capable of playing a particular game you might have heard about uh, ibm deep blue which eventually uh, beat gary kasparov the world champion of chess <clears throat> so that kind of functionality is limited functionality where all the rules and all the prior information to solve the task that already is embedded in the machine that is already built into the machine and then that machine is able to perform the task very well then we go into entire contrast of it that is a strong intelligence or generalized intelligence uh, the machines or the algorithms which are capable of thinking like humans Uh, they are able to retain the learning out of data processing out of data sets and they are able to upgrade their learning accordingly uh, for example just like infants uh, they learn throughout the life they le learn as they grow and till they become adult they retain whatever they have learned and they use that learning uh, in moving on in life so similarly these algorithms are designed to think like human to retain the learning uh, taken out from data processing and then they add that learning to their algorithm and those algorithm evolve into better logic better algorithms basis of artificial intelligence types is functionality if we look at the functionality which is which can be seen in the machines we have different kind of uh, different types of artificial intelligence uh, these are basically called reactive machines limited memory machines theory of mind and self awareness uh, what are these actually let's pick up this reactive machines let's understand this so reactive machines when we talk about they show a very basic kind of functionality basic type of artificial intelligence basic level and they are able to perform a dedicated task all the logic and all the business rules are built into the algorithm and according to that according to those rules and logic uh, the reactive machine is able to perform the task so they are dedicated to perform a particular task very well that's why they are not able to learn out of data processing or whatever they do and they are not able to retain the knowledge <clears throat> then we have the second type on the basis of functionality which is limited memory machine they are able to sense objects around them they are able to assess they are able to sense the movement around them also 
and according to that they are able to respond to those changes those movements they are able to recognize the objects any obstacle which is there in the way they are able to recognize but still they cannot learn from what they do every next time when they are supposed to function their logic is reloaded in the memory and afresh that logic works for example autonomous cars google's autonomous car uh, every time it is started it is loaded with the fresh logic and it is able to sense the object around it it is able to calculate the distance of the objects from it and is able to recognize various gestures from the other drivers uh, and it can process the movement of the objects around it and accordingly it is able to respond it is able to control its functionality like the speed of the car or stopping the car turning the car accordingly accordingly it is able to do that reactive machine if you if we revisit this type reactive machine you can think of a robot uh, which is able to move in a fixed structured environment while limited memory you can think of a robot where it is able to make its way through a dynamic environment where other objects are also moving <clears throat> then the third level of intelligence is theory of mind where machines are able to interact socially they are able to understand the emotions of the other object other agent or the other person and they are able to recognize the gestures they are able to uh, interpret the gestures and emotions and accordingly they are able to respond they can figure the person who is interacting interacting with them they can figure out whether that person is angry or happy they are able to assess the emotions they are able to sense the emotions and accordingly they can respond and they are able to respond in human like voice and style style means gesture so you you might have heard about the robot sofia uh, which is one example of a humanoid which is able to interact socially with other people it can speak it can speak in different languages it can answer rationally if you ask a question from it so that sofia robot is built up on the concept of theory of mind then there is <clears throat> fourth type the self awareness type of machines which actually do not exist as of now but that is what uh, the artificial intelligence challenges are being overcome are being uh, we are trying to overcome those challenges to achieve the machines which are truly intelligent which are self aware which are able to respond like humans behave like humans and the research is still going on in this direction now apart from these four types of machines uh, on the basis of functionality there is another fifth type which is conceived as artificial super intelligence which is a futuristic machine which will be exhibiting highest form of artificial intelligence and it has self evolving smart algorithms self learning algorithms and eventually this machine gets so intelligent that it can take over autonomously all the tasks and all the functionalities of the system so this is the highest form of uh, artificial intelligence called artificial super intelligence so these five types are on the basis of functionality now let's try to understand the concept of artificial neural network before that let us try to understand what is a neural network uh, if we look at a human brain human brain actually controls the entire functionality of the body and human brain retains all the learning all our emotions or all our uh, whatever we go through in life all our memories all our <clears throat> learnings which happen that all is retained by the brain now how does a brain retain uh, such a lot of information since birth uh, into itself a uh, brain is actually vast dense network of neurons dense network 
called neurons. If we look closely at a neuron, uh, it is just like a node out of which some thread-like structures are coming. These thread-like structures help this node, this neuron to connect with other neurons. So, billions of neurons are connected with each other which constitute the brain and the central nervous system. And entire information is stored in these neurons, in these nodes. And the information is transmitted from one neuron to another through thread-like structures called exons. So, this way the information travels through the brain, through the central nervous system and information is retained in neurons. On the basis of this brain structure, on the basis of this neural network theory, the artificial neural network is conceived. of computers where each computer is able to process an input and several thousand computers are connected with each other forming an artificial neural network wherein each computer is functioning like a neuron which is capable to hold the information, to process the information and such a neuron can be called a node, such a computer can be called a node. So, there is one computer which is able to take one input, process it and generate the output. Maybe that output goes into another computer and this single computer is connected with a network. So, this way a network of several hundred, several thousand computers or processors can be created and that can be used to simulate a neural network. So, such a setup is called artificial neural network. So think of these computers connected with each other where certain computers are taking input, certain computers are uh, in the hidden layers where they process the information and then they give the output of the processing to the other computers and this way this entire artificial neural network functions. Uh, we will learn about these artificial neural networks in detail in the coming sessions also. As of now, this is the basic concept of artificial neural networks which is based on the actual neural network of brain. So far we have learned that in artificial intelligence there is a machine which is made to learn just like we when we uh, take birth when we are born we learn. And as we grow, we retain the learning and use it for further growth. Similarly, we can think of a machine which can be made to learn. How that machine learns? It learns through data feeding and various logic. And this process is called machine learning. When a machine is made to learn so that it is uh, made capable to do certain tasks, then this process is called machine learning. If you look deep into the machine learning part, there are three aspects, there are three types of learning. Now this machine learning is uh, not a, a separate concept, it is a subset of artificial intelligence. The practical aspect you can say of artificial intelligence, wherein the basic part is supervised learning. In supervised learning, really a machine is given the input, all the data which is required for processing for its training that is given to it along with the description of the data. Machine also comes to know what is the meaning of that data. What does that data actually under, uh, define, describe? For example, date of birth, date of joining, a score of a batsman or a serial number or roll number, name of the city. So, the labels are given to the data also and machine is also told what output it is supposed to generate. Now with the bulk of data fed to it continuously and it does the processing depending on the desired uh, output and it generates that output. Now this through this entire process this machine is able to learn. This is called supervised learning where the developer gives the machine all the data 
the data is described through the labels and the desired output is also known to the machine. Now, one step ahead of this process, this level is unsupervised learning where you can think of a machine which is given the data but it is not told what it is supposed to give out. That is figured out by the machine itself. Then this is called unsupervised learning. Now this is a very high level of intelligence which is also called deep learning and it is based on artificial neural network. So here machine is only given the input and machine has to figure out on its own what it is supposed to do with the data. All the predictions, all the patterns it is able to see, it is completely dependent on the machine and whatever new findings are there in the terms of trends and patterns, those are given out by the machine. They are also called rules. So when the input data is processed on its own, the machine may come up with certain new kind of rules which, it's, which it is able to see as trends and patterns in the data. Those rules can be used to train other machines. Then we have another form of intelligence uh, in machine learning. Another form of learning is there that is reinforcement learning where a machine or an algorithm is made to learn certain things to do through trial and error method. So machine tries to do something. It might get failed. That's a penalty. I score, there, there is a penalty reward approach where when a machine is able to do something, it is given some positive score. When it fails to do something, it is given a negative score. So here also machine is not told what to do. The machine has to perform the task on its own through trial and error approach and learn from that. Eventually, whatever reward it earns through the process that adds to its learning. For example, an autonomous car which has to find its route from point A to point B. Now that car is put into the, the algorithm is put into an, a simulated environment of various routes and now this algorithm has to find out, this machine has to find out the best possible way from point A to point B. Now going through various turns, various obstacles, it might be able to overcome that obstacle or it might be able to take a right turn, correct turn, I mean to say. So this way the rewards score gets adding up. Somewhere it might get stuck in the obstacle or it may fail to take a right turn. It may go into a wrong turn where it goes, goes into another obstacle. So that way as a penalty, the negative score is added up. So as the reward maximizes, the learning maximizes. Whenever machine sees that it is able to score a positive uh, mark, a positive score is there, that means that signals the machine that it is on the right path and that is added to its learning. So this way learning is directly proportional to the maximization of the reward. Higher the reward, higher would be the learning. So this way machine learning is could be supervised learning, unsupervised learning that is deep learning and reinforcement learning. So in the next session, we will look into various domains of artificial intelligence. Thank you.